Hi, this is Ginger Cook. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and our Creative Art Collaboration Group is doing a series of paintings, sort of bringing that into the forefront because that's what this month of October is about. And I chose to paint a painting done originally by the Impressionists in 1912 by the name of Frederick Fieschi. He was an American, but he had the privilege of studying both with Renoir and Monet. And one of my favorite paintings that he's ever done is this gal, Lady in the Garden. And I like it. I thought it was appropriate. She's got a little headband here on her head, and she's just sort of softly looking at the flowers. And flowers to me are hope. And I thought it was sort of apropos because she doesn't have real long flowing locks. A lot of times when people go through chemotherapy, you know, they're either wearing wigs or they lose some of their hair. And I thought, I don't know, I just thought this sort of, this was sort of a combination. It was a beautiful painting. I love the Impressionist style and all the flowers. And yet I thought it uh, sort of celebrated women in a new light. And so join with me as we start this wonderful tutorial on Lady in the Garden. And just be aware, it's going to take a while to paint this, but it's going to be fun. Okay, so while... This originally, when I originally painted this picture, I did it on a 9 by 12 canvas. You could do this on 16 by 20. But when I printed it out, this came out to be 8 by 10 because I found this picture in a book and I just printed it out. And we're going to have this picture available for you to print out on my website. And it will come out on your printer 8 by 10. So I'm going to do this painting 8 by 10, all right? Just so you can kind of see that's the size. So what we want to do is put out some paint. We're going to do an underpainting very quickly. And I'm going to just tell you the colors as I put them out in a second. I'll, I'm just going to put them out and then tell you the colors. So hang in there with me. Okay, we have titanium white, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, cad yellow medium, yellow oxide, cad red medium, burnt umber, and burnt sienna. We may put a few more colors out now, but this will certainly get us going, okay? Now what I want to do is take a separate plate and just grab some of this white because we want to make it like a, like a turquoise color because that's the painting of the under, this color right here, this turquoise color, it's going to be an underpainting. So we're going to take uh, phthalo blue because that's a tropical, tur you know, kind of, not quite turquoise enough, That's but it is sort of a nice pale tropical blue. And I'm going to grab a little tiny bit, like 2% of um, yellow, okay? Now that's not bad, but I want it a little bit greener than that, so I'm going to get a little more blue, a little bit more blue, like this. So I want quite a bit of this. So, you know, that's why I'm not mixing it on this plate. I'm using a separate plate to mix this. But, you know, and if I'm making a big um, painting, I don't use these silly plates. I use a, <laughs> you know, wax paper palette, but this gives you an idea. There's our color. I think I want to add a tiny bit of yellow oxide to that because not only would that turn it greener, but it has a bit of red in it. We'll gray it out a bit. So there we go. That's a that's a nice deep dark green color. Let's get a little tiny bit more phthalo blue in there. I want it a little bit darker. And you can see how I keep scraping and squishing, scraping and squishing. And I, as you do that, you scrape and then kind of fold it over. That's a good way to bend. It's a set of doing this. I see people do this all the time, like they're stirring cookies. Scrape and squish. All right. So there's that's that's pretty good. That's my that's my sort of turquoise blue that I want for the background. Still want it a bit greener. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow oxide to that. Just a little bit more of a green tint to it. There we go. Kind of warm that blue up a bit. Okay. There we go. That's it. That looks pretty good to me. All right. So now let's put this away and just take a large brush. And one of the things you can do, if you don't know this, somebody complained the other day that their brushes were wearing out. Lightly sand your canvas if you have that problem. Just going to miss the canvas really lightly. I'll miss my paints, but I'm going to miss the canvas. Then I'm going to take a large brush. I'm going to take a fairly good, you know, big size one, even though I have to clean it. This is a, you wouldn't have to use one this big. Well, let's see, this is a number 12 ruby satin silver, and I'm just going to go ahead, and you can see I'm, I can cover this canvas pretty darn quick doing this down and across, down and across on this little 8x10 canvas. This will go pretty quick. So I'll meet you back here when this is uh, when this is covered and dried.
Okay, so I've dried this, and then I hope you've printed out um, this picture. Because what I'm going to suggest you do is just take a pen and sort of make some dividing lines. It's uh, 8 by 10, so a half is 5, and you want to put a line across it right like that. And maybe um, this one, you know, here's 8, so half of 8 is 4, so you put a line down here. And notice that she falls on this side of the halfway mark on the painting. Do you see that? So you come down here on your canvas. This is just real simple to do. Come down here with, a, say, like a little mark like this, and um, just take a, you know, just come down and measure it. Here, here's four. Draw a little line down in your canvas. Make some marks on your canvas like this so you know where you're going. So this is four, right? So I'm just going to barely touch this and come down here like that. There's a little piece of new pastel chalk. So basically I divided the canvas in half and I know that she is sitting right in here. Now if I come up from the bottom halfway, which is five inches, like this, and I'll put a little mark here. Um, let's see, do I have a little triangle handy I can use? Well, I don't see one handy. Um, that's okay, I'll just come up here f five inches like this. Just come up from the bottom of your canvas five inches, measure. Get in the habit if you're starting to do figurative pieces or things that feel a little bit challenging for you to draw in. That doesn't feel like five right here, it's not. See, I could just tell this is five up here. Okay, try to get a little more accurate than I just was. All right, so we're going to say this is five. So I've divided, basically what I've done is divided the canvas in half, you know, using a little ruler and some chalk because chalk will wipe off a dry canvas, all right? And so if you've printed this out a couple times, what you can do is you can just cut out a picture, you know, cut her out because she's like, this was designed for this canvas. And what we will do is I'm going to show you how to trace her on. I did this once before and we'll do it again. All you do is just take some chalk on the back of the canvas and I'm going to use brown chalk so I can see it. You know, I want kind of brown chalk. did it once before, but I'll give it another coat because I've used this already. Just like this, just take some chalk on the back, not the canvas, excuse me, on the back of your paper like this, okay? This is what you're saying happened. Let's blow that off somewhere, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place her head just about, um, well, so let's just measure it. I mean, you can measure it too on yours. It's just about, not quite uh, three quarters of an inch below the top. Here's a piece of tape. I'll just get grab a new piece of tape like that so that you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to put her right about here. And you see where her hand is touching. You see this? See how her hand is touching the middle line? So that her hand has to be pretty much lined up with this coming in here like that, and this is where we're going to put her. Then I'm going to take some tape and tape this back down. Now, I know that this has to be kind of on the top here. Okay, so I'm lining up her hand. Here's our halfway part, right like that, and get her kind of straight. All right, so I'm going to say there's. this is where I'm doing that. Now, what you do is you go over it with a pen. First off, make sure that you're getting a mark here. Is, this a, is it marking for you? All right. So make sure that you're, can you know, this is marking. And let me zoom, zoom in real fast on this. I'll show you. I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing. See, that's the other way. Zoom, zoom. All right, so you, I'm going to move this over so you can see. All right? Now, you see when I made a mark right here and I lift this up, you can see it right here, all right, under the canvas. So make sure that's working. Once you've decided it's working, just taper down, okay? And uh, here's all right. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna start here because normally I would use a different color pen than this one um, because I've already marked on this. All right. So I would use a different. But I'm just gonna come around here. This is just gives me a vague outline. It's a very simple way to get something on the canvas. Here's the outside of her dress. Here's her sleeves coming up like this. Okay. And I'm pushing pretty hard with the pen. Here's her neck, and I make sure that I've got the ba her back coming back down here like this. Is that here? Or I'm not sure. It's kind of hard to tell. There's a light area back here. I think that's it. And then here's the top of her head. All right. Now, it's a little bit hard on, this is sort of out of focus. It's a little bit hard to see. You can just, you're not going to get it perfect on her face. You're going to have to work on that. But I mean, I can at least kind of say where the hair went and all this went. Let me just see. Is that showing up? Yeah. Okay right like that. Make, here's the top of her dress like this. 
Okay. Make sure I've got her sleeves. There really isn't a whole lot to her. Here's her hands coming like this. Okay. I'll make sure I've got all that. I'm just going to kind of lift it up and see. Do I have her kind of lined up in there? I do. All right. So that's 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 all I had to do was just take it like that. Now now there's it's it's barely uh, barely you can barely see it. You might have liked white chalk. The other thing you can do is you can use um, graphite tape, which works too. Graphite paper, and that's like a carbon paper for artists. So all right. So this this is our gal. You can see she's just barely in there. But one of the things I like to do then is take a small brush and maybe so let's see something smaller than this. And some white paint. If I can find a small brush here. Had a nice little pile of them somewhere. Ah, where did I put them all? Oh yeah, they're all over here. Here, I'm gonna. Put, these are simply Simmons brushes. I really like these. They're inexpensive. This is a three-quarter inch, inch angle brush. And I'm just gonna take some titanium white, and I'm just gonna go ahead and um, outline some of her. Not being very careful. I'm just just I just want to make sure that you know when I'm doing the flowers and I'll leave a little space between her arm like the blue space between her arm wherever there's a line so that I can see it okay so I just leave a little space all I'm trying to do here is just basically say this is this is where she goes and um, here's her head up in here like this okay just not being very careful here's the top of her head her hair like this and so I've sort of got it I'd have got you know um, and again I've got um, you can see from the picture that we've got her pretty much where we want her we might have lowered her a little bit but I'm not going to this is where she is for me for this picture this is where I stuck her but alright so you can see that again I've got enough of a face going here at an angle and enough of her hair like that it's coming out around here like that and her body you know her dress is coming down here so as I get ready to do the rest of this picture because um, I'm going to do the flowers next um, I want to make sure that uh, you know I know where my where my my girl is okay mm -hmm. so this is where she is in relationship to the rest of the picture okay so now now I know where this goes now we're going to start doing um, something kind of fun I want to just take my ruler come down here next to this about um, this I'm going to leave this about a thumbs width or about you know let's see how wide is this about half uh, three quarters of an inch space okay like this and I'm just going to take a piece of chalk and yeah, let's see we put that somewhere else too Did, oops, that, that chalk's going everywhere today all right I'm going to come next to here like this line this up here so here's I want a little space here about about this wide Okay, I'm going to make that a little smaller, about like this. I'm going to say that this is this sort of blue band of whatever this was. And now this painting is going to look slightly different because it's smaller, you understand? But it's the same idea, and it's actually the size of the one in the picture here, okay? So this is what we're saying had happened here. So, um, all right, so I've got this here, and then I'm going to come over here a little bit where the halfway point is on, on on the canvas and come down here with another one. I'm going to say I'm going to save this space out and I'm going to save this space out right here and the rest of this is going to be uh, flowers. All right. So now that we've kind of gotten this is really all there is to that. Now let's take our brush which we had white on it already and let's rinse that off. We use the same one. Wipe it off on a paper towel or rather a, a, a I like a fabric rag, not a paper towel. Just squeeze it off. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make the flowers around her. So let's take some phthalo blue and some yellow and make a pretty nice green. And let's add some red to that. And now more yellow. Let's come over here. We've got a dark green and a light green, okay? All right, dark green and a light green. All right, so we're going to start with that. And let's see, I'm going to put a little white in some of this. So I've got three greens going. Okay, so phthalo blue and yellow, a little cad red medium, got the dark green going, okay? We've got these three light greens. And I think I'm going to just you know, wipe my brush off because I used it to mix, sort of a combination of this. And I'm going to come around and just tap in around here. I'm just tapping in 
these greens around her head. I want some of that phthalo blue underneath that turquoisey color to show through. I'm going to come around here like this. I'm going to just tap some of these lighter greens around here. This is not that different than how we did Pansy Garden. If you did the Pansy Garden picture, um, you know, you don't want to, you want to do that. That's not that different. Okay, so um, I'm going to come up here on this side of that wall, come right up about kind of at an angle by her hand, and then I want to come over in front of here, still tapping the greens. I'll go into some of the lighter ones now. And I'm just tapping using the corner of the brush, coming around here like this. Now, I'm not going to mix, I'm not going to rinse my brush. I'm just going to get a little yellow oxide and tap up next to the corner here like this. Just little tiny dots. This is all Impressionist painting, little tiny dots of color. And up in here too, just a little bit, a few dots of color up in the top part above her head, just up in here like that. Tap, tap, tap. Um, there we go. I have her a little higher in the picture than I did on this one, but she's kind of right according to my photo. I mean, uh, what I printed out, so I'm kind of using that one. But you could lower down a little bit if you wanted. All right, so now we're going to come around here with a little bit of this yellow oxide, just a few places in here, not too many, down about right, kind of about even with the back of her dress, which we may make a little larger in a minute, but this is close enough. At least we kind of know how far to go. And let's see, do we need to put any of that yellow oxide in here? Maybe up just a tiny bit up in here. We'll just put a little bit more around this part of the window and stop. Okay, now rinse the brush. We're not drying anything. This is Impressionistic painting. He didn't dry anything. We're going to just keep moving along and come back to that. We'll let that dry. So let's take a little bit of ultramarine blue now in white, clean brush. And I want to come over here and I'm going to start tapping in ultramarine blue. And that's your blue jean color blue. I'm going to tap in some blue flowers over here like this. Tap, tap, tap. A little ultramarine blue and white, about 50-50. And try not to mix it very well. It's better if you don't mix it very well so that as your brush taps it kind of almost blends in the color. There's a little bit of white on some of it. because you, you want different colors. If you sit there and mix like a crazy person it won't feel very artistic. It'll feel very coloring book like. But you want to vary the way you mix your colors. Okay, so we're going to say that there's some blue flowers coming up in here like that. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. And where else are some? Oh yeah, there's some over here. So you see where I am here. I'm going to come down here like this and um, tape, uh, you know, put some blue flowers. Let me just... Uh, okay. And um, like that. Come around here like this and do some little blue flowers. Like in here. Okay, down here. Same thing. All down here on this side, tap, see the, see the little bit of, I take a little bit of blue, take a little bit of white, tap it a few times on the plate, and then I start tapping it in. It's because I want this to be a combination of white and blue flowers, and that's how I'm getting it. Okay, kind of coming up at this angle. And the little white and blue flowers kind of stop down here on her desk. And remember, you want to uh, buy her dress. You want to leave some of this turquoise blue showing underneath. That's the trick with this picture. She leaves that. Okay, now we'll keep going because there's a lot of this color. We're going to keep coming down around here like this. This is our kind of blue background. And as we come down lower, we're going to put less white on it and more blue. And we're going to just tap, start tapping in blue flowers now because we have some whiter ones. I think they look like hydrangeas to me uh, going over this. So here's our dark blue against the turquoise coming all under here like this. And I'm going to continue it down about down to here. I'm just going to kind of give you an idea of where this is going to be. And all right, so then catch me up to here with the blue, okay? Okay, and as you come further down toward her, as you come further down toward her, let's put a little phthalo blue and ultramarine blue together with it and change blues a little bit. Mix them together, and I'm going to put a little white with that. Now I'm going to add a little white to that. So I've got some phthalo blue and some ultramarine blue mixed in with that. And you'll see a little bit of my white dots now because this is kind of a combination of both of these. So I'm coming down closer to her dress, still wanting to let some of this turquoise show through. 
and I may come back later and add some turquoise on top. A, a painting is all about layering, all right? So you can see as we come down here, in fact, we're going to switch. No, I think that's okay. I want to come down in here like this, down toward the bottom, and see we've sort of changed blues a little bit. And the same thing over here. By adding the phthalo blue and the turquoise together with a little bit of white, now we've got a third blue we're introducing, which is, gets more turquoisey. And so we're doing it on both sides here. And I want to, eventually I will come back in front of her shirt and make it a little blue. I guess I could put a little bit right there now. Because I know what has to be over here, because I've got sort of a guide. Does that make sense? I've got a little bit of a guide. What's what's going to be over here? And um, now let's just let's just stop this. I guess we could do a few little strokes like this. They should be on top. I did the other one with these on top, but I could just do a few like this using the angle of the brush, like that, just down here at the bottom, like that. Just just something. Just, we'll cover most of these up, but I've got them there. Okay, so now, here's what we've got to do. We're going to come back up, up into this area now with some yellow and some of that lighter green. And I'm going to tap over these colors. And I'm going to, remember, i got yellow on the brush, a little bit of green. So I'm tapping over these colors. Some of this yellow is showing through, cad yellow medium. And I'm going to say that there's some yellow flowers up in here, going up to the corner, right up on top of these. You see that? Right up on top of those. And I'm saying that's nice. Where else are there some yellow flowers? There's some right over here, kind of in this area. And by tapping them up here, we so it's quite a flower garden, all right? We've got some over there. Okay, now I'm going to rinse my brush, wipe it off on my rag, do it a couple times. All right, so we're going to start with some new set of colors. All right, so now we're going to go into cad yellow medium and white. Okay, and I'm going to put some more yellow out because it's gotten a little dirty in the green. So I'm just going to add a new place on the plate for some new yellow. Okay, and I'm going to take some white and uh, say, okay, all right, so cad yellow medium and white. Now I'm going to come up here like this same little brush and I'm going to start tapping on little tiny white flowers and using just the corner of the brush. This is why we're using an angle brush because we're using just the corner of it to tap on all next to her these little light flowers. They're smaller all over in here like this kind of next back into her. Now we haven't dried any of this but at this point it's pretty dry. If you were doing this with gels I wouldn't recommend it in this sense. Unless you're going to do her with gels, it would look very odd. So you're going to, you can get an impasto technique with this um, just by using more paint. But I would caution you against trying to, you know, intermix gels with this unless you were going to do her in gels and it might be a trick doing her face and everything. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying it might be tricky. We're going to come above her head like this right next to her hair and add some of these light bright yellow flowers all up in here. See a little bit of white on the brush. Starting to tap in color. And we'll go using just the corner. And maybe I can, let's see, if, can I come up, up here like this? And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. I think if I'm zoomed in as much as I can be. All right, so you see I'm just coming up here like this, through this area, kind of crossing over into here. Here's our flowers. And back into the cad yellow medium. Some brighter ones. Just pure cad yellow now. Pure cad yellow. I don't have any white on it. You can make some of these a little brighter. Come up this way. Over here. Right down back here. I sure want some down here, back by her skirt. And then kind of tapping around into here like this. Just keep tapping it down. All right, now what else I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, I'm going to just take, as long as I've got this yellow out, I'm just going to do, do some yellow streaks in here at the bottom. Just a few. We might as well, just just a few down here with the grass. Let me zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about. I come down here. Okay, that was zooming in. That's, I'm zooming out. Okay, I'm, 
wonder I couldn't zoom in. I had the wrong button. Okay. All right. So it's hard to, you know, I'm thinking about, thinking about 16 things at the same time. I'm telling you how to do it. I'm telling me how to do it. And I'm trying to remember how to work all the controls on the silly computer. But it's all right. I've got some grasses coming up here like this. Not too many, just a few. Okay. Now, let's go back up to her. And now I can zoom in. Let's go back up to her. Okay. So I don't got much with her yet. But let's go back into the dark green. Okay. And I want to tap in some dark green color. Remember how we made that? Okay, just a little bit of phthalo blue on the brush and the yellow and a little bit of cad red medium. And you should have made the dark green, but if you didn't, that's how you're going to make it. Here's some dark green uh, leaves coming around kind of close to her. Okay, like that, just like that. There's some dark green. There's not a lot. There's just, there's very little dark green. There's just a few little dots of it in here like this. And um, maybe up in here, on the left hand side, I can show you up, 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 kind of up in here, we've got a little dark green going up here on the edge over some of this blue. Again, this is all about layers. This gets pretty because you've layered it. It's not hard. It's just a bunch of little fast dots. Dot, 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 dot. This isn't really a hard painting to do. You're going to play a little bit with her. And I, I admit that that might be a little challenging for some of you. But, but for the most part, just remember to, it's like picking up your feet. Remember to pick up your brush and move it around. Okay. So here, see, I've, see, I've got, so still have some color up on here on the brush. So when I turn it this way, I'm getting some yellow. So something a little bit different. I was able to do that. Okay, so now, okay, so we're getting there. Now, zooming back out. All right, so here, here she is. It's a little smaller picture. Okay, now, um, what do we want to do next? Oh yeah, we're going to do some big flowers up in here. So we're going to, again, rinse our brush off, get the green off, and so we'll leave all this alone. I've got some white and other colors coming up here in a minute, but we'll let that dry. Now we're going to go back up here to white, titanium white, okay, just like this. And I'm going to tap in on top of this sort of slightly dried blue, but it's not completely dried, some flowers. Now as it touches the blue, it's going to pick up some blue, and it's going to tint the flowers just a little bit, which is why we didn't dry it. And I didn't have you add any colors to this. Some of the flowers can touch like this. So it comes in here. And some, not all of them are the same size. We've got to remember that. They're, they're kind of coming down here. And I think they're sort of a blue hydrangea. That's what it feels like to me. And we're going to come around here like this and keep making the flowers. I'm going to maybe show you on this one so you can kind of see. As it gets up into here, I'm just, just suggesting tops of little tiny flowers. Just the tops, kind of using the side of the brush like this. These flowers are a little bit smaller as they go up into here. They get teenier. Come on, you gotta, you know, help me out. They get teenier. Okay, like that. And then we're still in the white. And then they, as they come into the forward area here, and I'm going over some pretty good wet blue. There's just little little areas of patches of these. All right, that are coming down, like that. Little patches of these. They're coming in here like this. Okay, little patches. Some bigger ones over here. This is almost on a stock up here, so I said some bigger flowers here. But and then over close to her, there's some. And let me go back to my colored picture again. Sometimes I like to do a black and white picture just so I can see values of how much. So you can see even in the picture, there's a lot of ones here, and um, almost like they're on a stock. And then, um, and then as you come up here closer to her, they're all just like inner spurting little white dots into the blue. So there's less of that and more of just sort of some blue and white flowers that are kind of mingled in here in a bouquet, kind of by her hands up in here like that. And um, as long as I'm doing it, I've got white on the brush. I want to put a little white up in here next to the um, these yellow flowers. I've got a few little white ones I'm tapping on. And up here too, there's a few little white ones. This yellow's had a chance to sort of settle down, so I've got tiny little white ones coming up there like that. Okay, and then over here on this side, for sure, on the seat. Remember up here, on this side, we've got white coming down. 
Um, just, just a little bit of white flowers coming here, crossing over into the yellow and the white. So they're slightly different colors because we've let everything stay wet. And then I've got a few little white. We had some, but I've got a few little white flowers. They're tiny. And here's some little bigger ones coming in here like this, kind of down by your skirt. Okay, so we're just tapping in some flowers. So it's all fun, really. I mean, it's just very relaxing to do this, just sort of tap in. Do I have any little tiny white ones up here? Maybe a little, few little white ones I could tap in. Just barely say that something's up here like that. Little teeny ones. Now, you've got to vary the size. That's the secret with all this. Vary the size of what you're painting. Okay, I'm going to put another flower right there on this edge. Okay. All right, so there's our... We're getting there. Okay, and then how about down in here? Was there something in here? Yeah, there was a couple. Kind of that snuck in here by your dress. Maybe something snuck over here. And if it's too much, you know where the blue paint is. You can put it back, but basically, we've 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 created a little bit of flowers. And as long as I've got that white on the brush, I'm going to get this light green color, and I want to put it right here like this, and kind of make this outside part of the wall right here. There's an outside part of the wall, and I'll get a little bit of uh, a yellow oxide next to it. I'll just do this. I'm going to say that there's this outside part of the wall. I'll just put a little little shadow here and like this, okay? All right, so we're saying that that's... You don't really see it here on this one, but here's a little oxide here up around your head. Okay, like that. All right, so there we go. There's our outside, and I think I want that wider. So back to my turquoise color, which remember how we made it? That turquoise, the background color, with phthalo blue, white, and a little bit of yellow, okay? So I'm going to just make this a little wider here, and I'll put a little more white with it. I want this wider here. There we go. That's a little too white. There we go. Just whiten that up. There we go. That's better. There we go. I knew I needed a nice big space here and here. So if I lost it, I can put it back. Okay, like that. Okay, those were those same spaces. And then just take a little bit of paint, and so you don't have such a hard edge in a couple places. Tap over it a few places. Okay, like that. There you go. All right, so there's our two two solid places, and then we've got the flowers. Kind of important. All right, so I think this is a pretty good place to um, to stop as far as uh, you know putting in some background flowers. This would be a good place to stop. And I will keep the next thing we're going to do is we're going to dry all this, and I'm going to do her head. Got a little turquoise on the brush, so I'm putting that a little bit back in here too. See that? Had a little turquoise. I'm gonna tap over some of this because I had put it up there. I'm gonna tap over some of my blue, or I might have lost some turquoise. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna pause, pause this, dry everything, and we're gonna start on her. Okay. Okay, so here's part two, and again I'm gonna show you the painting I did originally, which was. Um, you know, 9 by 12, but we're doing this 8 by 10. I think it'll be a little easier to film and um, and easier for you to follow. And you can also print this out on our website, www.gingercooklive.gallery, and um, print the picture out so that you can actually have a picture of it next to you to see besides looking at the video, all right? I think that's kind of fun. And, you know, if, if, you know, originally, I mean, you imagine this was done in, in, in 1912, but I still think it's a fabulously interesting picture. And we're, I'm continuing on because I really didn't stop. I'm continuing on with the same brushes and, and um, colors. Um, and just make sure I have a clean brush here. And I may take a, you know, if I need a clean plate, I'll work on that. Now I'm going to really work on her a little bit, and then we'll come back and finish the flowers. But this was my plan. I'm going to work on her, her a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of white now, and I'm going to just kind of finish off her dress a little bit. It's coming down here, and I, I didn't really give her enough on the back side either, so I'm going to fill that out. Okay, and now I can take a little bit of time to do her, um, to do a little bit more white here. This is sort of an off-white, and here's her, um, her elbow like this, coming up all the way around the back to her arm. 
Okay, and then the front of her dress is coming down like this. I'm leaving just the teeniest bit of blue for that. And this is coming up in the front like this. A little more white here. Here's the front of her kind of ruffled blouse. I'm putting a little white on the corner of this brush and doing that. So we get more of the general idea of what, what we're dealing with here. Because it's, I'm going to start with white because there's all these stripes. I'm going to just add some colors. And that's pretty much what I can do there. All right, as far as just put, filling her in. And you see, we just did a little better job of that. Now, I think I'm going to change plates here. Yeah, let's change let's change plates. And because I want to do whiteness, some skin tones. Um, so we'll start with white, um, yellow oxide, and cad red medium. I want a smaller brush than this. This was the 3 8 in Simply Simmons. That's a little too big for what I'm trying to do. So let me find a little smaller brush. And I, you know, I'm kind of really en I'm enjoying these Simmons brushes because they are small. You can do a lot with them. Here's a nice small one, and this is a bright brush, but it's um, a number 8, the chisel. Simply Simmons. I think this would be a good one for this. So I've got my white plate, and I'm going to grab a little yellow oxide here with the brush, tiny bit of cad red medium, maybe a little bit of cad yellow medium. All right, a little bit of burnt sienna. All right, so I've got some colors there. I don't need a lot. This is not a lot of skin tones. I'm going to start with white. I've had all those colors on my brush, so I've got a pretty decent skin tone just doing that. And I want to come up here on her neck and her face. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to just suggest a nose. There's really, what I liked about this was there wasn't a lot you had to do to make this work. You don't have to really understand faces or anything like that. You could just suggest a, a nose and some, some a, a, a neck and some hair. And you'd get you'd get a get a person, and that's that's kind of what I was hoping for here. Let me just zoom in on this like that. I wanted to put this real close so you could see the picture. All right. So now you see I've made sure now I've got a, the neck. You notice it's a little lighter going toward the back, so I'm going to add a little white to that. Have a rag right next to your picture so you can wipe off your brush if you have to stomp it off. The trick to doing something this little, and it's tricky, if it was hard to do it on the other one, it's going to be a real challenge to do it on this small canvas. We're not going to try and do it perfectly, but what we're saying here has happened is, here's the top of her head, kind of, she's looking down, and then she's got this neck, and it's a little bit lighter on the back of her neck. Then I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna, say here's her hair coming around like this, and she has almost like a helmet type of a cap on her head. It's really her hair, but I thought it was appropriate. It kind of comes back like this and back down like this. Let's just bring it up a little bit like that. There's her hair. Now, it, it's darker than that for sure, and it, she's got that headband, and there's a sharp angle right here that's coming down. I may again switch brushes again, and then putting a little white on my brush like this, her hair just sort of is softer tap off the brush. It sort of gets a little lighter and softer toward her face, almost like it's bangs coming down. So then I'm softening it up with just adding a little bit of white color and down toward her face. Okay, Very soft. And then there's like a little bit of a shadow right here with the with the reddish brown color. And right here maybe under her chin. We're not we're not trying to do anything too perfect. I, I don't want you to just get stressed over the face and go, oh, it was so pretty, and then I did the face and I hated it, and blah, blah, blah. Don't, 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 don't worry about it. Now I got a little bit of burnt umber. Do a little shading in her hair, like back here. Then she's got this very nice headband that's coming this way. And let's put a little ultramarine blue with it. So it shows up. Burnt umber and ultramarine blue will make that very dark, darker than the rest of her hair. And we're saying that there's her little headband coming this way. All right, like that. There's her little headband. And uh, make sure that this back line here is straight. And if you have to, switch brushes to something little. Okay? And make sure that this line here on the back of her neck, this back line right here is straight where that headband gets a little wider and it's at an angle like this. This is real key. And we're going to say that her the rest of her hair is kind of coming around this way. 
and I'm just going to say there's some highlights, maybe with some gold highlights up in the toward the front, the little white on them. That's that yellow oxide color, a little bit of white up toward the front. It's a little bit blonder and lighter up toward the front. Okay, and her hair's coming down this way. Now, this just gets so subtle. I just hate to bother you with it, but a little bit of 99% uh, um, white with a tiny bit of cad red medium. And I'm just going to say that a uh, little bit more cad red, maybe 2% cad red medium. I'm going to say that there's some cheekbones here. That are, It's a little bit lighter here where her cheeks are. And this was interesting. They really, this painting was so subtle. You didn't have to have the, you know, there was there was just a shadow kind of where the eyes was, and where the where the mouth came, and then there was a like a little bit of light color here, right, kind of right down here where her nose was. Let's see, that's too bright, but r right here, that right where her nose was. Let me put a little white with that little tiny brush, right here, just where her nose was. And here's the trick. That's too wide. So now I've got to take this brush, use the corner of it, and then bring that back out so that you don't see it. Okay, so that's, again, that's too wide. And so I'm going to rinse this brush off and then pull the brush toward me so that all I see is that little tiny bit of the white light outline here around where her nose was. Okay. And I'm going to just sort of erase it on the other side where I got it too big. There. Okay. So I erased it on the other side. Okay. There we go. So they're, they're just suggesting a little bit of a nose, you know, a little bit of thing. And then for her eyes, this was so subtle. I'm telling you, if you do this dark, you'll hate it. Um, you just want to have this little kind of triangular, you know, area like this, like a little V where her eyes are. And I'm going to show you the trick to this. We're going to, I'm going to put it on here and then show you how we're going to fix that. But as long as I'm doing that, there's your eyes, but that's not how we're going to leave them, I promise you. Here's my little tiny brush, and I'm just going to suggest the top of her lip right here. And wow, that looks as strange as can be. All right, I'm going to say there's the top of her lip like that. Okay, now what I need to do is to just bear with me. I'm going to dry this, and then I'll show you what we're going to do, okay? Okay, so obviously I wouldn't like to leave it like that because I want to push this all back. So I'm going to take some transparent mixing white, just put a little on my brush. I'm going to paint over the face and pretty much I've dried it and just kind of paint over her mouth and her eyes here, paint over her neck, just paint over the whole face. And transparent mixing white is going to, it's there but it's not. Does that make sense? It's there but it's not. So now suddenly she, it's less bright, and I'm going to paint over this line right here. All right, so I'm going to say that there's her face, and I'm going to paint over those eyes. I want those eyes to be there, but not that much. You know, I want to just suggest a, like a little shadow there. I thought that would be an easier way for you guys to see how you could do it. Then I'll take a little bit of that uh, peach color that we had and put it back on her cheeks, right like this. Tap it off. All right, there's her peach, a little bit of that peach color right here. Wipe it off. This is where you put a little paint on the brush and kind of wipe it off, okay? So you're suggesting that and a little bit in front like this, okay? So we're just suggesting a little tiny bit of paint here. And then the trick is, where's that little teeny, teeny brush I had? Um, here's one. I'm going to take some light color like this and come up above her eyes like this. Okay, so it makes it look look like she's looking down. And then I need a little bit of light right behind her cheekbones like this. So almost like a little there a little bit of light above her eyes so I can make it a little smaller. And a little bit of light next to her cheekbone. And she's just coming down like this. And then the trick is here's some white paint. You've got to have white it goes right up around her chin where this a dress is. It was kind of hard to draw that in. It's coming up around here like this where her dress is all roughly. Okay? So she really is looking down there. And I think I need a little purple color. So I'll take some ultramarine blue, add red medium, and white. 
make the slightest little shadow. I mean, it's like 99% white. And I want a little bit of a shadow coming down here. Wow. A little tiny bit of a shadow coming right down here on her nose. On the side of her nose right here. Okay. And they're saying there's where her eye is. Alright, so there's, there's our girl. And again, I'm not trying to do too much to this. A little bit of a purple shadow there. Maybe a little bit in this. Um, mist your paints every once in a while. So you've got little tiny bit just it's so subtle this is if you look you're gonna make yourself crazy if you just don't suggest a face and walk away and here's a little purple shadow in some on the left bottom part of that ruffle okay then I'm going to come back here with a little of that brown paint and I give her some bangs that coming in front of her head like this or her forehead like this and make sure I've got that hair coming down the nape of her neck there's the back of her neck it's a little cad red medium sure I have some on this plate. She had a little necklace on. That's what this was. There was a little necklace that sort of showed through here like this. You could put it or not. I think this is pretty optional. Here's a little tiny bit of red. We're going to put it up in her hair. Again, her hair color is optional. Um, I want to make sure I have enough of the dark up around the top here of her head, the back of her head. Make sure that that's dark enough. Okay, I'm going to make sure I've made her head big enough. A little burnt sienna up here with some white. A little burnt sienna. So I'm just giving her a little more hair than I had originally. Okay. Kind of coming back like this. The top of her head. And here's this dark line right here. Now we're ready to just... There, there she is. Now we're ready to just start um, uh, something. Now she has some flowers in her hair and I guess we could put those in. Let's just do that. Let's take a little of that green color, put a little green right here on her on her headband, and then take a little white, put a little white flower right there like that. So she's got a little white flower in her hair. That's cute, right? Okay, so we didn't have to do much with that. Now, still in the little brush, let's see, still in the little brush, let's take a little bit of um, phthalo blue and white, okay? Roll that off. Let's come back here like this. And let's put some phthalo blue stripes on. Now this is key. The stripes have to be curving around here like this. If you don't have them curving, it's not going to look right. This is a real pale phthalo blue and white. And that on the bottom part of her arm, they're curving around like this. Okay. And they're just little blotches of color. And over here on her sleeves little blotches of color and then right next to the front of her arm there's like one two three and these if you can print this out and kind of follow the pattern that's a good thing that's what I would suggest to you so sort of try to follow this pattern and I'm going to put some of this blue on her dress down here in some few little stripes like this a little bit of this blue color even some of the ultramarine blue so that little blue color make it a little bit darker down here on her dress you see what I'm doing here? Okay. We've got a little tiny person. In other words, the idea is just to, you know, put this person in. Her dress sort of melts into the into the uh, into the background, which is really pretty, I think. Dress sort of melts into the background. Now, this is a good place. Let me get a little white here. This sort of her this came in like this, her little white stuff, and then it came out again this way came out like this her ruffle okay now take some white on your brush come up on the top of this sleeve make the top of this sleeve a little wider like this now this takes some time it takes a little bit of time it almost comes to a point here and then back down do you see that it almost comes like a little arrow and then curves back around Okay, and then this part of her sleeve is coming this way. A little bit of white on the top of this. And there's white, believe it or not, on her elbow down here, like there, just where her elbow is. There's white, and it's got the tiniest bit of um, yellow oxide with it. It's not quite a pure white. And that's one of the subtleties. It, it probably, if you had an antique white, in your kit, that wouldn't be a bad one to do this with. Um, 
I don't think I have that light enough here. Here we go. I back on the back of her dress. Don't get this too yellow oxide. It's really white. It's just almost white, but not quite. So we're gonna. If you bring a little yellow into the white, it kind of brightens it up. All right. And then we're gonna come here in the front of this with this dress with a little bit of that more yellow white color. It's 99.9% .9 white, but it's just got the slightest hint of this other color in it. So um, when you put it next to the white ruffle it looks uh, darker and I'm going to put some of this on her dress too down in here like this okay so you see, see how I'm sort of putting it in and I'm not trying to be too crazy with you but and then a little bit of yellow oxide even a couple little bits of yellow oxide here too right next to the top of her shoulders and um, just a couple little little right up there like that and maybe around here on her sleeve a couple places now, <clears throat> what's fun about this painting is that the dress and everything is all sort of blends in. Now we've got that same color, so I'm going to just put suggest it on her hands right here, like this, kind of that off-white color on her hands. There's not a, you don't see a lot of her hands. Maybe she's wearing gloves or whatever, but she's you know obviously got some flowers going on, and a little bit of a a blue cuff coming around her sleeve like that. Just little, some dots. Just tap that on there. Okay, and where it got, where it got fun, where it got fun was this. <clears throat> it, you you want to make sure that you've got some dark contrast next to her dress so the dress shows up. Okay, you know, I put that right, right in there where the dress shows up. Okay, so I'm going to just take a minute now, and I'm going to just. Uh, I think I want to dry everything a little bit before I go on. So let's just pause and dry. I'm just going to pause and dry everything. Okay, so I've dried the dress and then I've put out some new paint. Some white, a little more thalo blue, and some dazzling purple this time. That's a new color, okay? And um, now I want to continue on with the dress. So what I want to say is that right up here where this makes a little curve in here like this, she's got like an umpire waist. That's what they used to call it, umpire waist. So there's a little bit of white here. Okay, just coming across here like a little band of white. I'm going to zoom into the top part of the dress. Getting the stop stripes correct will will make this so much easier to do. This is such a fun little painting. So let's um, let's zoom in like this. All right, so you don't see your head anymore. And I'm just going to put I'm going to put this stripey thing right next, so you can see right where we're working. Um, let's see, move the painting down. There, okay. Right, can you see that? Right where we're working. Here, let's do this. All right, so you see right where we're working with the stripes, all right? Okay, so you see this is where I just put a little of that white up here like that. Said so that this and it kind of curves up at an angle, okay? Make sure I've got this white enough up here with around her neck where this, the top of her dress goes, okay? Like that. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of, of, of Dosney purple and I want to come out here, just down like this one, see? And one, and one, and then one like this. And I think I'll take a little bit of white with that, because it's, it's, it's a little bit lighter, so it gets to the bottom. All right, so then right here, this curves this way. And then this is, gets, this gets, the front part I'm taking some time with, because it gets a little complicated. There's one up here. And like I said, there's a few right here on her a chest right here. There's one coming kind of up here. And then there's some little ones coming up from her waist. Little tiny ones right here from that empire thing I showed you. A couple little short ones. And then they go back like this. And then as they get in toward the armpit, they go that way. Okay? You just kind of see that? Now here around her shoulder, we're still doing a little Dosney purple, maybe a tiny bit of white with it. Around her shoulder there's a little one, and then there's another one that comes up and then back down, almost like a triangular shape, up and back down. Let's put a little cad red medium with this now in purple. We've changed colors. And use a little tiny brush for this up and down, just kind of around. It, what you're doing is showing the sleeve. Now after it reaches, remember there's that point here, 
Then it goes the other way. It kind of curves this way. It curves under now. This is an under curve. Now these lines are going this way and at a diagonal this way around her around her, her wrist and you know in her arm. Okay, then it's just sort of at a diagonal that way. Some small ones. I'm not putting in every one he did. I just want you to get the idea this is how he did it. Okay, like that. Okay, so you've got those. And then what happens below her waist here, they're just sort of, they, they're not perfectly straight. They're a little wiggly. I've got a little cad red medium and purple in this. And here, here it is coming down around, and they're sh sort of shortened. Okay. And then these two, like for instance, here's a pretty good long one. And, they, and then there's a short one. This one isn't very long. This is a longer one. Here's a longer one here, and then just kind of comes down. And I miss this paint so that I get a little more flow with it. His skipped an awful lot on his canvas, so if yours are doing it, then then you'd probably be more accurate, right? And these are coming here, some more purple. These are coming down this way, and then they kind of cave toward the center. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing here. They're sort of caving almost to a point here, down here, like a V right when it gets down toward here and then it gets down to the bottom of their dress her dress and it's still caving this way kind of creating that illusion of everything going out and in all right and let's see let me come up here like this I want to make sure I've got this one make sure that these are at an angle like that and now what I have to do here is dry this and put mixing white over it and I'll show you why so just pause we're going to dry that and I'm going to put mixing white over it All right, I've got these two dark, so I'm just going to take, I'm not even going to put it out on a plate, I'm just going to put a little mixing white. Make sure I've wiped off, if this brush has been in water, make sure you've got all the water out of out, off of it. And I take a little bit of white just here, and I'm going to go over this, like this, and just paint a little mixing white over those stripes. And you see how it just sort of pushes them, it sort of fades them out a bit. Does, it, does that make sense? It sort of just pushes everything into the background and makes it less bright. And you only get away with this if you put mixing white over um, uh, dry paint. Okay, so now I've got the, uh, you, see I've got them now, but they're not quite so bright. I don't, I'm not so worried about these down here. A couple of them, if you get them too bright, just take a little mixing white and just go over your stripes a bit. If, you, if they got a little too crazy and, and bold for you, it's a little trick. Okay, so we're going to zoom back out now and see where we are. Okay. Now, all right, so here's our girl in the garden. Now, we need a little more color with this. Yes, I know we just took it all away with the mixing wipe. That's okay. I'm going to come back here with the titanium now. Because what did I say happened? We know that there was a little bit whiter up in here, just on the corner here. It's a little bit whiter where this ruffle is in the front of her dress. Okay. And then right here on the top here. I wanted this a little bit wider here. Okay. And behind her elbow, I do want it wider and it doesn't look like I'm getting it white enough. So I'm going to just make sure I have this color here coming in back behind her elbow. Make sure that that's light enough. Because if this is her arm, it's going up like this and it's a pretty good line. Alright. So that's, that's a, what we call a a pretty solid line here like this like that with this and now let's come back here with that same light color and I'm going to lighten up her dress in a few places add some of this light kind of gold color and then back to the white okay back to the white maybe come out a little bit on her dress make it a little bit even wider than I had it okay and uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that uh, where did that mixing white go wipe this brush off. You know, one thing I want to do is um, lighten up this, this line right here, back behind her neck. Just lighten this up right there. Okay. There we go. So that's just, I wanted to put that sort of out. So it wasn't too much. Alright, so now we've got this. So we can come back with a little green. She had a few little green spots right up here. Just some little green on her dress like that. A couple little green ones. Um, just one, two. I mean, it was very subtle, some of the stuff she had. A couple little green 
spots on the dress here. A couple little green stripes, not too many. One, two. Okay. So we just add a little more color to her dress. And then the way to make her stand out is you take that dark green color, okay, and you come up behind her like this with your brush, make a dark green, you can add a little purple to it if you want, and you make little spots, Not you don't outline the whole person, you just make little tiny dark spots behind her with the leaves, skip a space, and then maybe do something like that, see so here's another little dark spot. And you come down next to the dress here with some dark. Okay, using just the corner of my brush here. Coming in here. I don't go it doesn't go up as far as her shoulder, but you're saying that in, for instance, right in here where her elbow is. Now now you see her more because why? Because wherever there's a light, there's a dark. And we'll do the same thing over here on this side above her hand. We'll say there's a couple little dark green spots next to her ruffle, which makes that one a sh sh uh, stand out, okay? I mean, and there's some dark green right next to her ruffle under her chin, see? And that makes her that makes her face want to stand out. That's interesting. I mean, it's a sort of an interesting trick. Now, we're still into this dark green. There's a little bit of this dark green in these flowers over here, a little bit, and up in here. Now we can come back and put a little dark kind of sneak it around here, just tap a little dark up in here like this, around on this side, up in here. And then on this side we've got a little dark, some sort of little dark green leaves coming up like that. Okay. And um, anything over here? Maybe. Just a few. Just not too much, but a little bit of dark over here. So remember, your eye goes to the lightest light and the darkest dark, so kind of where you want the contrast is here. Now here's some phthalo blue, and I'm just going to come in here next to her dress and do some dark phthalo blue. Just pure phthalo blue. And then I'm going to put some dark phthalo blue over in here too, these flowers. You can kind of see where I'm going with that. This is where we're starting to do the contrast. Okay. Like that. So every time you do that, that brings her out. So we're back into here with the phthalo blue, back into these flowers. Okay, coming around here like this, bringing it down this way, into the phthalo blue, maybe a few little dark, dark uh, dots up in here, okay, like that. So we're starting to add more contrast, always more contrast, right next to her dress right here. Let's put a little phthalo blue and white right next to her dress, right here. It's, it's dark, it's still, we can still see it, okay. In other words, it's not just one particular color. It says, what color did you use? What The fun thing about this was there were all these different colors. Just a little phthalo blue and white here. Going to lighten up some of these flowers here. Just phthalo blue and white. This side. Touch it. Now something else happened. Just a little phthalo blue and white. That's all we've done. Haven't changed. Haven't gone nuts on you. Just did a little phthalo blue and white. Okay. And same thing around here. And these flowers, we're going to tap in some more phthalo blue and white flowers. Put a little white here, say that there's some more little white flowers here. Tapping it in here. Everything kind of layered. And the more you layer it, the prettier this gets. That's what I'm going to tell you. But it, it's just really picking up your brush and tapping it down. Can't ex say that enough. Tipping, tip, you know, tapping it down. Now, in order to finish this, and which, which we'll do, we're going to have some pink flowers in here. I think I want a few little more light flowers up in here. I think I got, could come up a little higher here with this. Okay, so let's just switch brushes. Pause. Let's just switch brushes and pause a minute and dry everything. Okay, so just looking at the painting I did a little while ago that was nine by twelve. I'm going to take some light green paint, which is the, you know, your cad yellow medium, your white, a little bit of yellow oxide and a phthalo blue. And I'm going to come up here like this and I'm just doing some grass. Grass is coming up, leaving some of the background showing through. And the brush I'm using is a one quarter inch angle brush by uh, Simply Simmons. Or you could use a small pointy brush too. We're going to come up into here like this and you know, if you get a big blob of paint on your brush like this, kind of wipe the excess paint off the edges so that you're just talking about this. We're just going to come up here like this and finish this off 
like this. Put some green. And you notice we had some blue here, I've got those darker blue spots. We're going to put some on top of that. I'm going to just come over here on the edge and do this. All right, and I think we said we wanted some of this up in here. Do you remember that? We said we were going to tap some of that green up here on our windowsill. And then pure white and yellow, cad yellow medium and white, pure white and cad yellow medium. I want some more light yellow flowers now up around her and up in this area to bring attention up to her. You can see where I did it there. I'm going to do a little bit above her head here, right in front of her head in front of her face. I'm going to make sure I've got those yellow flowers right in here, right by her dress. See, it's starting, it's starting to pop pop up the colors a bit. You can kind of see how we're doing that. Just like this. Maybe take a little white. Just pure white now. Just drop a few little drops of white up here on top of that. Okay, so there's some white here. Like some little white flowers up in here. Okay, a little bit of white ones here, a few little white ones here. Now we've got some yellow ones coming, kind of some yellow flowers. So it's almost like yellow grass. I'm just coming up here with some nice bits of cad yellow medium. And a little bit of yellow oxide too. There's nothing wrong with that. Kind of mix them together so it's not so bright. I'm going to say that up here like this we're doing another layer of grass. Coming around her dress like this. And then on the left hand side it's more yellow oxide down in here, on the rather on the right hand side, down here in this corner. I've, I've got a little bit more gold. We're coming around here like this. Saying that here's that like this up here. And while I'm doing this grass, and you can kind of just see I'm just using these same colors in the painting, I was going to tell you an interesting story. You know the hashtag for this is Think Pink Art. And um, I don't think about this subject very often, but my daughter had a very, very close girlfriend who had, um, uh, but she and her husband had been very good friends with their, you know, the, the uh, Cinnamon, at, uh, you know, the Art Sherpa, her husband. It was, uh, we, they, Cinnamon used to go to the gym with Lori. Lori got breast cancer. And she was just, you know, it was about 20, 20 years ago, I guess, 15, 20 years ago. And one of the things, Cinnamon may tell you this on her one, but I'll tell you this story. I'd forgotten it until she mentioned it. Um, it just seemed like they were just getting, she didn't want to go to the mailbox, they were just getting bills and collection notices and their house was being threatened to be foreclosed on because they, they'd lost their insurance and uh, her husband was working like three jobs to try and pay for her treatments and it was really scary. I mean the whole thing was just terrible. And um, so anyway, um, Cinnamon went and bought a mailbox and she and I painted it with flowers and my husband George and I and Cinnamon and her husband John, we went in the middle of the night, George, Lori lived on a on a, on a road, a, you know, main drive, and she had about four acres, and she had to go down the driveway to this mailbox. And it was, so we set up another mailbox, and we had written on it, "Lori's Good Mail," and in it we 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 left gifts, and we left bright, really cheerful cards. And the mail ladies would started to put the greeting cards to her in there too. She would do it too. It makes me sad thinking about it. And this changed. It just made such a difference for Lori. And I mean, we didn't think about it that, that much. I hadn't thought about it in years. But um, this just changed so much for Lori. And it kind of brought her out of the depression. And all her friends started dropping off cards to Lori's special mailbox. So if you've got a friend that's sick, this is sort of a, if you live out in the country, I don't know about city people what you guys can do, but this was really, this really brightened her day. And I've got to tell you, it was a really great thing to do as far as, um, you know, not on our part, but the fact that it cheered her up so much. That was a, you know, Lori's special mailbox. And I want to put a little of this green in her dress too, like this. Okay. Up here, a couple pieces. Okay. So anyway, that was something that, you know, we, we had done and, um, and Cinnamon had instigated that and we'd all, you know, kind of made that happen. Okay, so, and somebody's going to ask, what happened to Lori? Well, she had one recovery of, of it and it came back again and she didn't recover the second time. But um, she was a wonderful gal and in October, we think about her.
Okay, one of the last things we're going to do is we're going to put some uh, sort of uh, some gladiolas. That's what these were, some gladiolas here. We're going to take some cad red, medium, and white. And uh, uh, just going to tap on these. You know, gladiolas, if you if you think about it, they, they're on a stock. And we're just going to pretend that some of this green stuff is a toxic st stock. Maybe I can zoom in and let you really see how I'm painting those. Because they're just dots on the canvas. Try not to make them in a row. Um, let's see, zoomy, zoomy. Am I painting, holding that right? Yeah, okay. Zoom, 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 zoom. Okay. So, like when I've got there, then I'll skip a space and put a little tiny one up here, some dots, and it will imply the flowers up there. Maybe there's a tiny one here hiding, okay? And this one's a little taller, and then I'll have one down here. Maybe you can see it down here a little bit, I'll just suggest there's part of one by just doing a few little dots. Gets, the, 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 the camera gets a little confused about the, um, camera gets a little confused about the, um, if, if you get too much going and get it moving and it's not sure about the colors anymore, it can't focus on anything. It probably happens to you too, doesn't get a little confused, don't know what you're painting anymore, but sympathize with the camera. Okay, so here's a little, little white on these lighter ones up over here. Okay, and I want to come down here and say that there's some glads. And up in here, a few little, just, this is just cad red, medium, and white, but mostly white over here. And then next to her dress, we're going to put a few tiny ones, just sort of tapped in here like this. I'm more on the left-hand side. You can kind of see where I'm painting them. All right, now I'm going to just stop that for a minute. Well, wait, we got to put one down here, too. There was a glad down in here, this corner, okay? So there's that. Now, um, white paint and a little green, mostly white. I want to come up here like this and start adding some lighter colors. Let's do white and yellow, I think. Maybe less green, more white and yellow. I want some light, real light colors in this grass so that when her dress comes down and you see it, she sort of, she just sort of camouflages. This was what's so clever about this painting. Dry this over your gladiolas. If you can't miss these doing this, then dry it, okay? I'm, I'm missing my glads doing this. I'm coming up. And it's very light in the center. The center part, right where her dress is, is the lightest part of the picture. But there are these little tiny thin white lines that are coming up like this, just like that. So you may have somebody that this is just, I had this painting done years ago. I did it years ago and I had it in my kitchen. I just love this picture. I think it's, maybe it's because I'm not much of a gardener, but I really loved it. And let's see, I'm going to just come down here like this with some white and suggest that her dress is coming down further than it is like that. Let's just pull some dress down like that. Pull a little blue like that into it. Here's some blue in her dress and pull it down into the garden. Then I'm going to take a little bit of blue and put some little blue, just stay a little blue and white now. A few little blue flowers just sort of chucked in here like this right on top of all these. This is about layering, see? So here's some little blue flowers here coming down in here on top of the grass. So you just, you know, this just takes so long, there's just so many little dots of paint that belong in a picture like this that you put on like that. So the same thing over here. Now we're getting into the Dosnine purple and I'm going to bring some of these lines down in the grass and little tiny short lines say that the grass is coming up from the bottom. Lots of little tiny short purple lines. Some of them are about a quarter of an inch long. None of them are very long. Some of them are just um, the length of this brush. I can almost just touch the brush and lift up like that. Probably for some of you that may be, if you're using an angled brush, here's a little trick. Just take a rag and pull it to a point like this, okay? Then put the purple on on both sides and then just touch it. Just touch it. If, you, if you're having trouble getting these skinny little lines, do that. And make sure that you're pulling that brush to a point. These are all things that I talk about, and you know, all the time on my gingercooklive.gallery uh, art classes that I teach online. And there's so many, so many things to know. I guess that's what I would tell you. So many things to know. 
Okay, I'm going to bring this dress down like that. See, it's kind of hiding into the grass. And um, this is one of them. Just this little trick of, of pinching your brushes to get the, just the right effect. Some little tiny lines. Make sure you've got some coming off the very bottom of the canvas. Okay, and then the lightest colors, okay, the lightest colors are in the middle here. This is where your light yellow and your whites are as far as your flowers go. Everything's in the middle, kind of about this much of her, around her like that, okay. We'll bring some little white flowers up here on this side like this. Some over here, we're going to bring a little, few little white ones back, maybe something over in here. A little white flower over there. Um, this is just a charming picture. Can't say enough things, nice things about this picture. Okay, you see, I just keep going here with her hands, and then the last thing is there were some purple flowers up in here. It's an interesting choice. I just, um, but they were more of a violet color. All right, these sort of. I can kind of show you in. Let me see if I can show you in this. Uh, picture here, this glossy one. See, they're almost a pink color up in here. These were kind of orange, these glads. And then some off the canvas down here. But these up in here were sort of sort of pink. So, let's rinse our brush like this. Let's rinse it. And I would say the color you want is magenta. It's just, you know, you can mix a lot of colors, but if you don't have it, then it's going to be ultramarine blue and white and, and your regular red. But if you have magenta, that's what I'm going to suggest. So it's going to be 95% white and about 5% magenta, like that. And just sort of a nice color. And this one was by Liquitex, and it's called, I'm going to make sure I give you the right name, it's called um, Quadrochrome Magenta. So, but, you know, some sort of a, you know, which is a pink color, and I'm going to tap on some of these pink flowers. It's almost like she's got a little pink bouquet that she's holding up in here. So there's all these little pink flowers growing just pretty close to her. They don't they don't travel far and on the top of this bush a little bit of you know pink flowers that's magenta and white over in here. They don't get down too low kind of in this little area up here. Little pink flowers little tiny dots of pink flowers like that. Isn't that good? I mean, this is really a cute picture, okay? All right, and they had that, and I'm going to come back here with a little bit more white. There are a few little more white flowers over in here around those pink ones up on this edge. Oops, it makes some white up on the, above these pink ones. Make sure I have enough little white dots, too. Doop, 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 dot, 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 okay? Dot, dot, dot around her hand. Okay, something like that. All right, so you're you're getting the the sense of how how this works. Now, let me just uh, let me move all this out of the way. I want to pull a little bit of a peach, you know, a little glad off the bottom of this. Just right off the bottom, I want to suggest that there's a little gladiola. Maybe these are not good enough. And then over here there was again. I, I'm not trying to get picky, but this was sort of fun. He took the turquoise blue and the white white and a little tiny bit of yellow and it got this real pretty sort of that you know that turquoisey color the background but slightly lighter than our background that we made you know that background kind of turquoisey green color put a little bit of green in it okay and then right up in here there were these little leaves that were on this little plant right here these little turquoisey leaves right like that just on this plant right there and I just thought that was pretty, so we're putting it in here. You put a little bit more, there you go, like that. There were some of these turquoisey leaves that came up on this dock, okay? Like that on this side. And let me just put all this down like this. Let's take a good look at our picture again. Make sure we have enough white and um, streaks in it. Do we have enough white in the, in the dress? Make sure that our dress is coming down. Now we're just going to Make sure this line, this outside edge of the dress, is, is pretty, pretty pronounced right there. Okay, so make sure you've got that right there. And I'm just gonna. I think we've got another white line 
on the outside of here. Let's just make sure that you've done that. These angle brushes are perfect for that. It's coming this way. Okay, bring some of her dress down into the grass. Okay. And uh, a little bit of white right here underneath that, her, her uh, empire waist. Make sure that that little empire waist thing still is going. Remember, acrylics dry darker. Okay. And do you need to put any yellow or any yellow and white next to her face? Like you need to come in here like this with some little flowers. Some yellow and white next to her face. I, don't know, I mean, your paintings, you know, you're going to know. Okay, but I think, I'd say we were pretty good here. I would say that this was a great example of, uh, maybe not great, but a perfectly good example of how to paint Our Lady in the Garden on an 8x10. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And if you think you'd like to do more of these lessons, um, which, uh, you know, look, if you like this one, I think you'd like Pansy Garden on YouTube, which is another hashtag event. We do hashtags every, every month. Uh, we've got the you know the fall one from last month. This is October's ones. But also, if you go to my website, gingercooklive.gallery, and let me just just put this right here like that. I'm gonna pause it for just a minute. If you gingercooklive.gallery, I have over 50 video lessons uh, that you have access to 24 hours a day. Plus, we have four new ones a month. Plus, you get um, you can send in your pictures to me for help. For instance, if you're doing something like this and you're a member of gingercooklive.gallery. You can send me in as you're painting it, and I will make suggestions like that. So um, I'm just going to suggest that if that's something you think you might want to do, um, uh, you know, so please consider going over to the website. And you, if you needed to, you know, draw her in, you needed to, you probably went over there anyway. If you weren't going to just sketch her in freehand, okay? So there we go. And I think I thank you for watching. And. I would probably sit here and play with this for another few minutes, for sure, because that's it's hard not to, because it's hard not to want to add one more flower or one more little dot of something. But this was great fun. Thanks very much for watching. And if uh, you've got someone that's going through an illness and you don't remember, think of sending them a card today. Maybe you can't put up a mailbox for them, but send them a get well card or send them a card that's saying you're thinking about them. And I'm certainly sending a card to everybody that's watching this that maybe has some sort of illness. Imagine I sent you a card, and thanks for watching.